process by terrified. Technology, as in life, the greatest fear is fear itself. No one needs to know how a television works in order to change channels and watch a program. Similarly with a computer, no one needs to know how it works in order to type on it. In fact, in this series, we're not really interested in the boxes at all, but in what you can do with them. You should anyway decide what it is you want it for before you buy one. I have a computer. I use it for word processing as a glorified typewriter, really. I know the names of other types of computer programs and just a little more than that. So in these seven television programs, I'm going out to discover just what computers can do and what the pitfalls are. I'd like to start with word processing because although it's something I know a little about, it is just a little. It's reckoned that 80% of computer users make use of less than 20% of a program's potential. And I'm one of those 80%. So maybe I'll find out just what I'm missing. In the beginning was sadly not the word. Humans first communicated with sign language and sounds. A visit to the House of Commons would give you the general idea. Writing came much later. Alphabetic writing began in 2000 BC, but not a lot changed for the common man for a very long time. Even Gutenberg's printing press in the 15th century was available only to a very small number of people. So for nearly 3,000 years, letters were formed by hand with a variety of writing implements dipped in different types of ink. As most doctors apparently learnt at school, handwriting is often illegible and always slow. Even if you can understand it, it's difficult to correct mistakes. The invention of the typewriter in 1867 changed everything. Suddenly, it was possible to produce large quantities of totally legible text very quickly, and the typing pool was born. To star in thousands of B-movies, office romances and music hall jokes. Part of the fun of the typing pool, for the bosses that is, was that very often the same document had to be typed again, and again, and again, as mistakes were made and minds were changed. Typing was an effort though, so most people did stop to think before they committed words to paper. But then came the invention that meant you didn't have to think at all, the word processor. Suddenly it was possible to dump on the screen the first, second and every thought that came into your head in more or less any order. You could waste enormous amounts of time endlessly manipulating the words until you were fortunate enough to hit on an arrangement you liked. It was supposed to bring about the paperless office. Instead, we tend to want to admire every version of what we write beautifully printed out on paper, the consumption of which has multiplied. Creation and repetition became easy and suddenly anyone could write. Who could fail to be grateful for this invention? Without it, junk mail, for example, would still be a gleam in the eye of a lunatic. Word processing is the reason that most people buy a computer in the first place. It's made life so much easier for millions of typists and writers, not least in the speed of getting the words down on paper. But it's when you're correcting mistakes or changing your mind that the word processor really comes into its own as the students here at the Enterprise Training Agency are discovering. Can you tell me what your initial reactions were to the word processor? It was mainly one of fear, and fear of the keyboard. So I didn't know when I touched certain keys, what would happen. So my first reaction was, am I going to be able to do it? But uh, gradually I got over that, and it's fine. It'll be for my business <laughs> when I do start up my own business. I think the advantages will be there that I'll be able to call up what I want very quickly, like invoices and letters of introduction and things. Doing by typewriter, I find it difficult to write, let's say, more than 10, 15 letters a day. Using a computer, I can just do a lot 
hundreds or 200 letters a day and changing it very easy to change the, the addresses as well. It really can make your life easier, but you're less likely to need to make changes when you're simply copying someone else's words than if you're making them up as you go along, such as when you're writing an article or a short story or an episode of The House of Elliot. The process of writing is a, an extraordinary thing and quite indefinable. It's like throwing a pack of cards in the air and hoping it comes down in bridge hands, um, which it doesn't. You start off with ideas and you go through an enormous process of structuring them and then restructuring them into scenes and then tearing it all up and re rewriting it all again. I used to use a steam typewriter and then I went on to an old electric typewriter and then I dropped it down the stairs and somebody said I ought to get a word processor. So I sat and cried for a month while I got used to the word processor. And then I discovered I couldn't actually live without it. You get through an awful lot of paper on a typewriter. And also, one of the great drawbacks is in any sort of script writing, you're going to do more than one draft. You're going to do two, three, and sometimes you can do seven drafts. You know, it can get really hysterical. And you never change one line, one paragraph, one scene, because it affects what happens back and forward of that particular thing. So one paragraph will alter five pages. So you can't just rewrite one page. You'll have to retype five pages. On a computer, you can just go zap and it does it. You write up the scene on the, on the Beast. You send it into the office, uh, then editors and producers and everybody else works on continuity, on whether the feel of the thing is right, whether it's viable in terms of mechanics like location time, studio time, character, the number of characters you've got. They, you all sit around and discuss it, and then you go back and rewrite it all, which you're looking at sort of 120 pages or so. That's so there's always tinkerings right until the final rehearsal script. I'm which is published by the office. He is given to the actors, really. The software is, I think, a modified version of WordStar that uh, Amstrad preferred. Uh, it's done jolly well, because it was only designed, I think, to do domestic letters and sort of people writing to the vicar and things. And it's churned out tons upon tons of scripts over ten years. And it is seriously on its last legs. All right, I've got an episode of Elliot in the computer. I want to change a couple of scenes. What I've got to do first is decide how I want the page to appear, how I want the script to appear. And I can call up a menu that gives me various options of how to do this. Press F2 and I get a menu that's got two pages of things I can do. Um, the first one gives me is boldface. It just makes the type heavier which is nice if you want to emphasize something. Underlining, which is self-evident. I need that a lot. All my characters uh, need to be underlined to discriminate them from the actual script. Move text, which means I can take scenes, paragraphs, whatever, um, move them around the document. Copy text. If I like something enormously, I can have it twice. <laughs> OK, the scene I want to change. I have a scene with Beatrice and Evie in their office. They're talking about Jack going to the polls, going to the election. And Evie says, wish him luck. Now, at the moment, what I've got following it is a scene in the workroom, which dramatically is not particularly good. What I'd like to do is go straight from the reference of Evie saying, wish Jack luck, to then seeing Jack at the polling station. Now, this scene comes a couple of pages down. So I'm going to page down to the appropriate one, which is an exterior of the polling station. Right, I've got that. And I'm going to call up the menu again on F2 and find the page of the menu that tells me how to move text. I'll choose move text. 
with a cursor till I've got it, press return. And I've got on screen instructions again, move the cursor to the beginning of the text I want to move. Okay, we've got that, I'll press return. I can then scroll down the screen and it'll highlight all the text it's going to move for me. When I've, there we are, I've got that lot. I just press return and now it tells me to take the cursor to where I want the scene to go. So we'll go page up a little bit quicker. Right, I've now got the cursor where I want the scene to appear. I press return. And magically, it returns. There's a couple of things in this particular scene that I'd like to change. At the moment, I've got Charles in the workroom. All the workroom staff are there. And he's looking at a poster um, advertising Agnes as a music hall singer, which is rather tedious, because unless you, you can actually see the poster, it's not much uh, interest. So it be more interesting, and it'll let us know what's happening if I have him putting it up on the wall. So I'm just going to take out the instructions, the stage directions, which are looking at the poster. I'll delete those and reinsert... Uh, what's he doing? Charles is tacking up. He's tacking up a poster on the wall. We're all going. Charles has organised a shower bang. Then we can go backstage after and on for a bit of supper. Oh, it's going to be a right good night. Right. Okay, I'll stop it there. Judy, can you get right into Diana? Using a word processor makes you a much better writer. Because in the old days of paper and typewriters, if you got a line wrong but on the third draft, the pressure against typing it all up again, you think, oh, hell, just let it go. Now, you've got no excuse to let anything go on a word processor, you become more critical of your own work. You say, that's not really right, and it's so easy to change it. I'm really sorry for not believing what you said about being a singer. It's all right. OK, the scene is as good as I'm going to make it now, or as good as I can get it, so I'm going to go back to the other page of the menu, and to come out, all I want to do is save it. The disasters are mainly forgetting to save um, when you have a whole day's work go down. I have a fundamental belief that there is no such thing as an inanimate object. They are all malicious beasts and are liable to, to, to take decisions that have nothing to do with you. So on that level I haven't changed at all. I still regard them with great suspicion, but I've called a truce, if you like. You know, if it works for me, I won't hit it. So we get on OK. So for moving words around or correcting mistakes, a word processor is hard to beat. Do bear in mind, though, that different word processor programs, and there are dozens on the market, work in different ways. The command for underlining, for example, could be any one of a dozen different key combinations. What's important to learn from Debbie Cook is what she can do with it, not how she does it. Not everybody wants to take advantage of everything a word processor can do. As I said at the start, I don't. I don't really need to yet. But some people do want to use the extra features, like pasting pictures into a document, arranging text in columns, and playing around with the size and appearance of the text. Sounds complicated. Well, that's what Daphne Clark used to think. In the little village of Sheet where we live, we have a notice sheet which is handed out to all the parishioners at the churches. It gives them the information of who's doing what, what's happening, and diary dates ahead. I certainly am not a, an expert at this. I'm, I'm very amateurish. I've taught myself, apart from those few weeks which I went to night school. Um, I didn't have any prejudices about computers. I, th I thought they were quite terrifying things because I'd understood that they were almost like Big Brother. And then I became involved with this computer. And I could actually save things and just update them. That really did save time. And I'd far rather play with this than I would the video recorder. 
I have so often programmed the wrong program by forgetting to change the channel or last week I actually programmed it all in and hadn't changed the clock. I haven't done anything quite as stupid as that on here. <laughs> so I'm just putting the final touches onto the school governor's report to the parents. I've actually typed in all the copy. I'm now going to format it into columns and make it presentable as a document. Click again onto that and then onto page two. Now I'm going to make each page into two columns and to do that I go to the format and come down to columns. I'd like it into two columns so I must change that to a two with a space of 0.17 in between. That's OK so click OK and just wait a moment while it does it and there we are with the, with the columns in there now. We have a nice little space here for a picture. So let's have a look and see what we can find. Click onto the little apple icon and drag down to the bottom here, which is a scrapbook. Most of the pictures on my scrapbook have not been created by me. I've taken them from a clip art program which was provided by the computer sales people. Taking them from the clip art and putting them onto my scrapbook makes them easier when I'm working between documents. There's a little figure, he might be quite useful. So if I cut him out, to put him on the, on the document, I need to put him onto my clipboard, which is another little facility for taking pictures out, putting them on the side. So I'm going to copy him, close my scrapbook for a moment, and create a new document. This is all a little bit fiddly. I'm going to open a drawing document so that I can make this picture. Now in my clipboard I have my little figure and I'm going to click onto that page somewhere and paste him on. This is a cut and paste effort. There he is, he could be slightly bigger I think. So we drag that corner out and down. I think he will do. But I'd like another boy facing him because I think that um, it will be quite fun to have them playing conkers. So if I copy him again here by clicking and pasting him, he's gone up in the air a bit so we'll pull him down. I don't want him facing that way because he can't play conkers one behind the other so I'm going to flip that over. I'm going to arrange it in other words so I find the arrange, pull it down to flip it horizontally and that turned him over. He's a bit far away for conkers, so we bring him a bit closer. I now need to draw the conker. So I clip onto this facility of a pencil and draw the string. And again to draw the other string. Then I need the circle. This is the sort of thing that is fun to do but is quite time consuming. We go out of that and back into there and now I'm going to paste the picture into that spot. There we are. And I'll move it over the page a bit just by pressing the space bar. And there we have our picture on that page. I think the heading here is a little lost with the rest of the script, so I'm going to change it. So to do that, I need to click and drag across and make that black. Come up to the font on the top, click onto that and drag down to Geneva, which is a, a print. Let's change the type of print. Now I'm going to increase the size, so I go on to size and bring it down to 18 points. And that gives a much better heading for that item. It gives a heading and then the script follows. And that I will go right through the document and change some and not others. So the next thing to do will be to print it. First thing I have to do, of course, is to turn on the printer. So 
I need to bring the cursor up to file, click it on there and come down to print. Release my finger from the mouse. It's telling me that my margins are a bit small but from experience I'm going to ignore that. And now look through the here. I just need one copy. I'm going to print faster mode because I don't need a good quality copy just at the moment in case I need to make adjustments. And I'm only going to print page 6. So I need to click onto there, page 6. And as I only need the one page, I need to put a 6 in there too. I've got the sheet feeder organised. So I now just need to click onto print and wait for it to happen. I think lots of my generation think that computers are newfangled things that are not necessary. And it certainly is not for the macho boys. It's for everybody. Daphne Clark a total convert, and through her computer she's also found a central role in her community. However, there are other advantages to a word processor which neither Debbie Cook nor Daphne Clark tackled. One of the simplest to use is the spell checker. Now, Tariq, you're using the spell checker here. What exactly does it do? Spell check means not having to worry about typing or spelling errors as you type, because it will find those errors for you and allow you to quickly rectify them. Can you show us? Well. The word computer here is spelt incorrectly. The spell check offers three alternatives, and with a single press of a key, it corrects it. That's brilliant, but are there any disadvantages that you can see? Well, while the spell check identifies words that have been spelt incorrectly, it won't identify the wrong word spelt correctly. So, for example, it won't identify the difference between there, T-H-E-R-E, -E, and there, T-H-E-I-R. So it's not foolproof, then? It's not totally foolproof. Thanks very much. Daphne Clark, in that last story, was doing some quite advanced text manipulation. In fact, on a small scale, what's also known as desktop publishing, or DTP. Laying out her text in different ways and adding illustrations to help bring it alive. Not all word processors can do this, but in our next and final story this week, we visit a man who has taken this a stage further. Nick Harmon was a design engineer. When his work started to dry up, he moved to the country. There he earned his living by setting up a telecottage, providing local people with access to office technology, including computers. He also uses his computer skills to publish local books. I chose to live in Bovey Tracy um, because it's a beautiful place. I've known it for many years and it seemed a nice place to, to live and work. And I've always wanted to live and work within the community. When I got here, I realized that there was a market for uh, the ability to produce low-cost, well-presented documentation. And people started to come to me and, and, and saying to me, can you produce a book? Desktop publishing, as I see it, is the ability to format text, not only for style, but also position, uh, quickly and easily to, to create professional-looking documents. I found I was creating books and I thought, well, I might as well sell them. Uh, and it's worked quite well. And it also helps me to design books because I've got infinite number of examples that I can base designs on. The book we're creating here is The History of Bovey Tracy. It was published about 10 years ago by the author who self-published it. Since I've been here, people have asked about it and I realised that it could do with reprinting. So I decided, with permission from the author's widow, I went about publishing the book. Sometimes we would word process the text ourselves from a manuscript. Sometimes we are given a, a disc with the text already on. Um, it doesn't matter to us what format it's in. All we're interested in is text, raw and simple. Um, if it's not already in, in ASCII format, we would normally resave it as ASCII. ASCII is short for American Standard Character. Um, it's just one of those computer terminologies that uh, we understand as, as just raw text, just the characters themselves plus paragraph breaks, because that's all we're interested in. I will now 
uh, import that import that file by going to load and text. The, the chapter one that we've just imported is the last of a series of uh, chapters that we've done so far, each one being a separate file. And we can see that the, the uh, chapter title of the earliest beginnings has appeared simply as unformatted text, to which we will now introduce our style. I'll select that paragraph and choose the style we want it to be, which is chapter heading, which we've now done. That still requires a bit of work because we want those words on separate lines, which we can now do by changing that one. The first paragraph is the paragraph with the large first character, so we can select that first paragraph and give it the character that we want. The greatest thing about Ventura and probably many other desktop publishing packages is its enormous flexibility. Which gives you almost too many options to choose from. What I've been able to do is, and I'm sure many other people have been able to do, is use the standard PC, the standard computer, with a slightly better enhanced laser printer, I'll grant you that. But basically the, the, the equipment is ordinary desktop PCs that people would have in their home. Using a combination of the software, the laser printer, and traditional litho printing methods, um, I can produce uh, outstanding quality books. Well, two years ago, I wouldn't have imagined that I could be <coughs> producing books, just me sitting here at an ordinary desktop machine. Three people, all of whom couldn't now manage without their computers, or rather without the programs they use to process their words. It's easy to muddle computer and word processor, but the computer is just the plastic and metal bit, the hardware, and that's the part that causes most fear. The software, whether it's the word processors we saw this week or the databases in the next program, is easier to deal with because it normally imitates something you already know. All these people mastered their computers because they found a program that helped them do better something they were already doing. Laughter and Lou Roll.